So today we'll consider several examples that will eventually lead to partial fractions. Even though at first sight it won't necessarily appear as a problem in partial fractions. So let me just take you through this, okay? We'll make it more of a narrative. And then maybe for some of the follow, some of the problems coming up, I'll let you throw some ideas at me. But for this problem, in this problem, you don't need any special ideas. The right thing to do presents itself because you see these logs all over the place. And you also see 1 over x, which is the derivative of log, right? So I will actually do something in place. And when you do this kind of work or on your tests, I actually encourage you to do the same thing. Less writing is better. So this is the derivative of <coughs> log of x. So it's finding its way under the d sign. So I'm just going to put it right there. d log of x. That's my interpretation of 1 over x. Maybe it's not an ideal thing to do in a lecture because we've lost history of what we started out as. But this is the quickest way, and in this case, the most reliable way, because there is less to be distracted by, less writing, to get to the right answer. And so now that I realize that more work will need to be done, I will actually replace log of x with u. And so what I have is u plus 1 divided by u times 1 plus u squared. So a complicated rational fraction. So I won't even continue here. I'll continue working with that fraction. No need to drag the integral signs with us. And do you see one step, one substitution step, and we're right back with our partial fractions. And so you can expect that in a lot of the problems we'll consider today and on tomorrow's test. Okay, well you know exactly what to do. I presume there are no questions. Let's combine the fraction. So a gets a multiple of u squared plus 1, ends up a u squared plus a. This numerator gets a multiple of u, so it becomes b u squared plus c u. So I think I got that right. And we've got to match it up with u plus 1. So I can do it even without collecting the like terms, just because it's so simple. So A needs to be 1. C needs to be 1 as well, because that's the, co that's the linear coefficient. And A plus B, which multiply U squared, must equal 0, because there is no quadratic term here. So, and, and so if A is 1, that b is minus 1. And we have all our three constants just like that. So, so, anticipating the fact that this term will need a little bit more attention, let me actually rewrite this. So we get Okay. So only this term requires just a little bit more insight because the top here is just about the derivative of the bottom except it would need to be 2u. We're missing that 2. So there'll be an extra one half on the answer. We've seen this way too many times. So we have, I'll just say it once and then write it down. Log natural of u minus half log natural of u squared plus 1. Agreed? Good. Plus arctan plus a constant. 